More than 20 women have publicly accused the President of the United States of being a sex pest. I turned around and I see Donald standing there. I'm thinking, this son of a bitch just grabbed me. It was an assault, absolutely. It was a very physical attack. Now a court is being asked to decide whether President Trump is a sexual predator. The truth is always the right option and we'll win out in the end. <laughs> Tonight, we reveal details of his parties with teenage models. This particular party, there were four men and probably 50 models. And I was one of the models. As Donald Trump prepares to visit Britain, we hear from the women who say he's unfit to be president. He said, how old are you? And I said, um, 17, he goes, oh, great. Not too old, not too young, that, that's just great. This is where Donald Trump's road to the presidency began. The US version of The Apprentice gave the property tycoon a new level of fame. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. But the program that boosted the Trump brand might now finish him. On screen, he was the straight-talking billionaire. Off screen, there was another side. Donald was known throughout the filming of the show to comment on women's looks, comment on who he'd like to sleep with. What sort of things did you hear him say? Well, I heard him ask me or ask others, do you think she's hot? Would you like to sleep with her? You know, what, what would you do with her? That was the personality that we just came to know as Donald's personality. That's just who he is. I'm being truthful, and I'll always be truthful. He, How stupid saying, is that, right? It's not stupid. stupid. It was on the show that Donald Trump met this contestant, Summer Zavos. I want him to be She fired said, what have you done and truth. you couldn't answer it? You know what, Summer, you're fired. Summer Zavos says two years after she was fired, Donald Trump met her at this hotel in Los Angeles. She claims she had been talking to him about her career. It was these bungalows at the back of the Beverly Hills Hotel where Summer Zavos says the incident took place. These are like private little units at the back of a very swanky hotel. Summer Zavos says Donald Trump was in one of these. And it was here, she says, that he forced himself upon her. I stood up, and he came to me and started kissing me open-mouthed as he was pulling me towards him. I walked away, and I sat down in a chair. He then grabbed my shoulder and began kissing me again very aggressively and placed his, placed his hand on my breast. Mr. Trump said Summer Zavos was lying and he'd never met her at the hotel. But now she's fighting back, suing the president for defamation. I wanted to give Mr. Trump the opportunity to retract his false statements about me. Since Mr. Trump has not issued a retraction, as I requested, he has therefore left me with no alternative other than to sue him in order to vindicate my reputation. It's significant because more than 20 women have accused President Trump of sexually inappropriate behavior. Now Summer Zavos could use them as part of her case. A court would decide who's telling the truth and whether the President of the United States is a sexual predator. Donald Trump keeps trying to get the court here in New York to throw the Zavos case out. So far, he's failed every time, which means President Trump faces being questioned under oath about the way he treats women. I 
think the Summer Zervos case is very significant. And that's why he is fighting it. And that's why there have been efforts, I believe, to delay it. It's like a slow moving train down the track. And I don't think he likes where it's going. Donald Trump's own words may also be used against him in court. I did try and her. She was married. <laughs> huge news there. Like this infamous tape. I gotta use some tic tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. I can do anything. How about a little hug for the Donald? You just got off the bus. Like okay, hug, absolutely. <laughs> After the tape came out, Donald Trump apologized for his language. I've never said I'm a perfect person, nor pretended to be someone that I'm not. I've said and done things I regret, and the words released today on this more than a decade old video are one of them. Anyone who knows me knows these words don't reflect who I am. Panorama has spoken to women who say that's exactly how he is. It was Mr. Trump's denials that made them come forward. This gentleman sitting at the window introduced himself as Donald Trump. Jessica Leeds says she was assaulted on a plane in the late 1970s. Suddenly, this man started groping me. He was all over me, and he was kissing me, and he was... Not a word was said from him. We're just having this tussle uh, in, in the seat, and it's like his... It's like his hands are everywhere. He's like an octopus, but it's when he started putting his hand up my skirt that I got the strength, the, the, the adrenaline to, to manage to wiggle out. It sounds like a sort of assault. He sounds it was. Like... It was. It was an assault. Absolutely. I mean, he, at one point, I did feel pinned to my seat. It was a very physical attack. Donald Trump accused Jessica Leeds of lying. Oh, I was with Donald Trump in 1980. I was sitting with him on an airplane. And he went after me on the plane. Yeah, I'm going to go after him. Believe me, she would not be my first choice, that I can tell you. Man. Mr. Trump says you're a liar. What, mm -hmm. what, did, what did you think of that when he said that? I, uh, he, uh, well, he's, of course he's going to say that. He lives in a fantasy of his manly prowess. Jessica Leeds isn't the only woman with a story about the president. Then his hand touched the right inside of my breast. Donald Trump would look up under their skirt and, you know, comment on whether they had underwear or didn't have underwear and, you know, what the view looked like. The person on my right, who unbeknownst to me at that time was Donald Trump, put their hand up my skirt. He did touch my vagina through my underwear. He pushed me up against the wall and had his hands all over me and tried to get up my dress again. And I had to physically say, what are you doing? Stop it. It was a shocking thing to have him do this. Some women have evidence to back up their stories. So this is your email account from when the incident happened. Yeah. Right, right. But again, Rachel Crooks says she was kissed by Donald Trump in 2006. She emailed her family that day. And I said, it was weird, it caught me off guard, and I must appear to be some dumb girl he can take advantage of. Her office was in Trump Tower, where Donald Trump lived and worked. She saw him outside the lifts and introduced herself. We shook hands and he pulled me in, sort of, for that normal double cheek kiss. And um, he held onto my hand, though. And as he made small talk and asked me questions, continued pulling me in for kisses again and again over my, on my cheeks. 
it happened like once and you're like, what is he doing? But it happened so quickly, um, it was just very unusual. And at one point he drew me in and kissed me on the lips and I was pretty shocked. I remember running back into the office and um, sort of hiding in one of the offices that I knew was unoccupied and just called my sister and was shaking. Like, I don't know what just happened, but something weird. Melinda McGillivray also told people about her experience with Donald Trump. She says she was groped while working for a photographer at Mr. Trump's Florida mansion, Mar-a-Lago, in 2003. So I had to be at least two feet away from Donald Trump when I felt this, uh, it was a grab. I felt a grab from my, my bottom right cheek. And it was almost like someone was, you know, trying to find, you know, a, a, or feel the contour of my body, almost like a, you know, feeling for something. So I turned around and I see Donald standing there. I'm thinking, this son of a bitch just grabbed me. This is disturbing. What am it was like someone was trying to feel whether a fruit was ripe at the store. And the fact that somebody would do that to you, how did that make you feel? Violated, entirely violated. To see someone who resembled my father grab me like that was just, just deplorable. Most of the women chose to come forward during the presidential campaign. Donald Trump says it's politically motivated and all his female accusers are liars. These claims are all fabricated. I have no idea who these women are. I have no idea. I have no idea. Every woman lied when they came forward to hurt my campaign. Total fabrication. The events never happened, never. He called us liars, but I'll never forget. I can remember it as clear as day. He described you as a liar. Of course. What did you make of that? I think we all know he lies pretty consistently, so yeah, I'm not surprised. Some of the allegations are of the most serious nature. When Trump's first wife filed for divorce here in New York, she accused Donald Trump of rape. In court papers, Ivana Trump claimed he attacked her during an argument. Now, after a divorce settlement, she clarified her view. She said she felt violated by the incident, but it didn't amount to rape in a literal or criminal sense. Donald Trump says the claims are false. He doesn't like people talking about it. This is his lawyer, Michael Cohen, and this is a recording of him threatening a journalist. You write a story that has Mr. Trump's name in it with the word rape, and I'm going to mess your life up for the rest of the time. As long as you're on this freaking planet. So I'm warning you, tread very lightly, because what I'm going to do to you is going to be disgusting. Do you understand me? Donald Trump has also used his cash to try to bury stories. The porn star Stormy Daniels says she had an affair with Mr. Trump. He says it's not true, but he paid her $130,000 to stay quiet. We have spoken to another adult movie actress who says she was there when the president first met Stormy. His bodyguard had said, can I get your number? That was the first time that Stormy ever met him as well. That's also the same evening that we all ended up in his room together for the first time. Jessica Drake says Donald Trump came on to her as well that night. When we first entered the room, he grabbed me 
in more of a forceful way, and he kissed me on the lips. It was almost like a pounce. It didn't feel good to me. It didn't feel consensual to me. Jessica Drake says Mr. Trump wouldn't take no for an answer. He even offered to pay her. He offered me money to go up to his hotel room. He went up to $10,000. Donald Trump denies the claims. But over the years, he's played up his image as an outrageous womanizer. Lady Di was truly a woman with great beauty. Would you have slept with her? Without even hesitation. You know, the National Enquirer, Howard, did a story on me that in the history of the world, Nobody has gotten more beautiful women than yeah, I have, okay? I, which is a great compliment. <laughs> She's probably deeply troubled and therefore great in bed. Back in the day. How come the deeply troubled women? Yes. You know, deeply, deeply troubled. Right. They're always the best in bed. Where are we going, Paul? The baby. The baby. The baby. Donald Trump has always surrounded himself with young women. In the 80s, his friend Ron Rice got him involved in beauty contests. He loves pretty girls, so we invited him to come along. He came to our pageants year after year, and he was either a, a judge or he was a um, celebrity VIP guest or something like this. He would watch the girls as they paraded by and do their turns and then go off the stage. Before he became president. These are Ron's private photos. That's me. Yeah, I caught you there. <laughs> um, so there's quite a lot of you with him. You spent a lot of time with him then, did you? Yeah, these, sure. These are young women, aren't they? They're much younger than him. How did he behave at these events? What was he like? He was a perfect gentleman. He loved the girls. He loved being around them. He loved the beauty. But he, he was a perfect gentleman the whole time. But some pageant organizers were concerned about his behavior. This is George Hureni. He arranged a beauty contest at one of Mr. Trump's casinos. He says Donald Trump pestered one of the contestants when they stayed at Mr. Trump's Florida mansion. One of the girls told us that Donald had approached her. Donald had tried to, you know, get her in bed. And she said, no. I don't do anything on a first date with anybody. And he didn't pressure her, he, he backed off, but he did try. And the next morning she woke up and he was sitting next to her <laughs> in the bed saying, it's the second date, how about now? So Donald Trump let himself into this woman's Obviously. bedroom and well, climbed had, in the bed. He had keys to all the rooms. Anyway, tonight we're about to crown one of these beautiful young teenagers here as Miss Teen USA. In 1996, Donald Trump decided to buy his own pageants. Please welcome my co-host, a young teen who has taken the runways of high fashion modeling by storm, the exquisite, adorable, beautiful Ivanka Trump. Come on up, Ivanka! Donald Trump talked on the radio about what he could get away with as owner. I'll tell you the funniest is that I'll go backstage before a show. Yes. And everyone's getting dressed and ready and everything else. And, you know, no men are anywhere. And I'm allowed to go in because I'm the owner of the pageant and therefore I'm inspecting it. You know, I'm inspecting. Right, I right. want to make sure that like everything doctor, is good. You're, you're there. Yeah, the dress is, is everyone good. okay? You know, they're <laughs> yeah. standing there with no clothes. Is everybody okay? And you see these incredible looking women. And so I sort of get away with things like that. And it seems that's exactly how he used his position. He just walks in, he doesn't care if we're nude or changing or, you know, in a vulnerable position. You know, you're changing out of your dress and you're putting your, your bikini on. So, you know, there's people that are topless. I saw him walk into the dressing room and I was stunned and I was so glad that I was out in hair and makeup. So, you know, he wouldn't have walked in on me undressing. So why do you think he was in there? Because he owns the pageant, and when he owns things, he, I feel like he feels he can do whatever he wants. I think he wanted to see 
women <laughs> in various stages of undress or in very, very skimpy uh, bathing suits up close, you know? Why did he go in there, do you think? Just to look at the women, like the audio recording, like he says, just to look at the women. It's claimed this even happened at his teen pageant, where contestants were as young as 15 years old. I remember being in the back and hearing the chaperones say, ladies, listen up, we've got someone that's going to come in and see you. Make sure you're at least covered up. All of the girls were changing, getting their bras and underwear on and getting ready to put on their opening number outfits. So when Donald Trump walked in, there were women in there who weren't fully clothed? Correct. Women were not fully clothed when Donald Trump came in. And, 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 and some of those women were, what, as young as 15? Yes, 15 years old. But we have looked further into the president's past, where there are more allegations about the way he behaved towards women. Much of it centers on his hometown in the late 80s and 90s. For rich, powerful men like Donald Trump, New York was a playground, lavish parties, excess, and very young models. Models were often recruited when they were very young. These pictures haven't been published before. They were taken at a modeling event in the early 90s. We met someone who was there. He doesn't want to be identified. He says Donald Trump hosted and attended parties after modeling events. The models were young, the men were much older. There was a lot of cocaine around, there was a lot of uh, alcohol. They were all older men, these were guys who could easily be their fathers, two times over. You, know, you had men in their 50s, 60s on up. It was like, kind of like a feeding frenzy. The girls were there as consumables, let's just call it that. And when you say consumed, do you mean that the men were having sex with them? Yes, that's the whole point of it. They were there to get laid. Barbara Pilling was a young model in New York. She first saw Donald Trump at a party in the late 80s. She's never spoken publicly about it before. He said, how old are you? And I said, um, 17. He goes, oh, great. So you're, so you're not too old, not too young. That, that's just great. I remember one of the waitress offered him a drink. He, he, he didn't take the drink, and, and he slapped her bottom. She was a blonde. He gave, he gave her a, a butt a, a slap, and he, and he was very loud. He was like, don't worry, that's not your tip. Heather Braden also saw Donald Trump at model parties in the 90s. One was in Florida. At 23, she was one of the oldest women there. I remember particularly seeing him at a party at a house in Miami. This particular party, there were four men and probably 50 models. Four men and 50 models. That's approximately what I would remember. And I was one of the models. I mean, I felt like uh, I was in some, you know, I could have been very well being auctioned off in some sort of a sex slave ring. That's how I felt. I felt like a piece of meat in a meat market. You know, I mean, what else could I feel like? We've spoken to a number of sources who saw Donald Trump at the parties. Most paint a similar picture. Just describe to us the way Donald Trump behaved at these parties. I mean, this guy was, it was like a predator in action. I went to the washroom and I was going in and a girl was coming out and she kind of looked at me, looked at me and, she, and I go, have you talked to that, that Trump guy? And she goes, yeah, as I was walking by, he, he's like trying to grab, grab my ass. We do know that he was having sex with them. How do you know that? Because the next day or days after we'd hear about it, he'd brag about it to his friends and they would get around. 
that he can you know, he got he scored you know maybe one or two girls at a time which is what he loved to do there's no evidence that Donald Trump slept with underage girls but what's most shocking is the age of some of the models at the parties there was girls I would say 14 15 years old from Europe, the European girls. They were 14 or there 15? There were girls that were 14, 15 years old, for sure. I mean, I didn't run up and say, how old are you? But they looked younger than I was, and I was 17. You just knew because of what they were wearing and how they would hold themselves. And these girls are all like, you know, anywhere from 14, 15, 16 years old. There was very few girls above the age of 19 there. And, and you saw Donald Trump with these girls who were that young, 15, 16? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, they're standing around with them, ogling them. It was just disgusting. I felt like I was in the presence of a, of a shark trying, we're getting ready to roll his eyes back in his head and bite me, you know? That's how I felt. It was just like, get the hell out of here. there may be more secrets about the president. Panorama has heard about other allegations against Donald Trump, but the women are too scared to come forward. I do know girls who've had um, run-ins with him and, and even agents and people who worked for him. And they're not coming forward? No. Why? Uh, they're, they're either in the industry or absolutely afraid for their careers, you know, their businesses, whatever. They're, they, they, death threats that they may get from people who don't like what they hear. Too frightened to come forward? Yeah, I think so. The White House didn't respond to the allegations in this program, but the claims about Donald Trump's behavior towards women go back 40 years. These vicious claims about me of inappropriate conduct with women are totally and absolutely false. There are witnesses who dispute some of the allegations, but now a court is being asked to decide who is telling the truth. After he called me a liar, I was threatened, bullied, and saw my business targeted. I will continue to speak out and tell the truth. The truth is always the right option, and we'll win out in the end. <laughs> Donald Trump's accusers say his behavior makes him unfit to be the president of the United States. You're doing the Me Too, and you're saying this has to stop, it's not acceptable. But so the biggest Harvey Weinstein is the president of the United States. How is it any different? I mean, we should be holding him to the same standard. If society really doesn't uh, believe that that's okay, well, he needs to be held accountable as well. The man who arrives in Britain this week could still be judged the sex pest president. From patients to medical heroes, marking 70 years of the NHS with personal memories. A people's history on BBC4 now. And a love story traced all the way back to India. Extraordinary discoveries for Olivia Coleman with Who Do You Think You Are? next. <laughs>